Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Rattle Essence and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it and I hope that this video finds you well. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about five summer fragrances that I'm going to miss wearing this fall. So make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin my video and I tell you what these five summer fragrances that I'm going to miss wearing in the fall are, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, if you're a fan of fragrance reviews and top lists here on YouTube, but pretty much anything having to do with fragrances, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner and of course while you're at it, please be sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell. And also before we begin, I'm very curious to know what is a fragrance that you're going to miss wearing this fall slash autumn? perhaps a fragrance that is summer oriented, maybe an aquatic or a citrus or a nozonic fragrance or something like that. I'm always curious to know and I love the interaction with my subscribers. So these are fragrances that are not necessarily summer fragrances. Well, maybe some of them are because they are generally on the lighter side, but there are some fragrances on this list that I would say can be worn all year round, but for some reason I have an association between them and the summertime, either because I find myself wearing it a lot in the summer, or it just brings about very fond memories of the hotter weather, and it's something that would veer in that territory. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get it started. The first fragrance that I want to talk about is a fragrance that I acquired quite a long time ago, and this one by the company Zerzhov is called Udin Overdose. Now, I remember experiencing Udin back in like 2011 when I was making a trip to a boutique in Manhattan. And I'm personally a fan of a lot of the original Shooting Stars fragrances, Udin, Kobe, Neo, Dajala, um, and many, many, many others, Ibitira being another one as well. And Udin is one that I found to be very versatile, a Swiss army knife kind of a fragrance. And it's also one, to be honest, that I would consider a year round sort of a fragrance, but I remember wearing it most often. And in the past I have featured this in summer lists. And this is one where that brightness of the uh, Italian citrus in the opening really does put me in the mindset of summer. And whenever I smell this, it just, it reminds me of getting ready for the beach. It reminds me of waking up really early in the morning, bright sunny day, you know, warm temperatures outside. And I will always have really fond memories of the summer with Wooden Overdose by Zerzhov. I also want to apologize if maybe you hear my wife in the background. She's actually a teacher, and so she's doing virtual instruction, as am I. But whenever I find these 10 minute breaks, you know I have to shoot these videos for you guys. Very passionate about YouTube videos and fragrances in general. So the next one is, in my opinion, a summer oriented fragrance. Just everything about this fragrance speaks summer. And I actually have this in a couple different concentrations, and it's from one of my favorite brands ever. And I feel like every single thing that this brand puts out is of the highest quality. And this is one of the original fragrances that I picked up from the brand. And every time I wear it, I get that delightful citrus opening. I get the brightness. I get the fullness. I get that sparkling effervescent nature that you get in the opening. It's such a gorgeous fragrance and I really can't speak highly enough about it. And of course, this is by Roja Parfum, and this is called Elysium. And this is my uh, Parfum Pour Homme concentration. I also do have the Parfum Cologne bottle, which is the blue one. Uh, but I, I personally really like wearing this one. It smells the same to me, to be honest. Uh, many would argue that this one is a little bit stronger, but personally, I get really fantastic performance from all Roja Parfum fragrances that I own, whether we're talking about Danger, Scandal, a Midsummer Dream, so on and so forth. But this one is one of the best fragrances to wear in the summertime. And I suppose the reason why I have such a strong connection with this one over the summertime is because I've worn it on more fancy evenings in the summer. So it just so happens that a lot of me and my wife's friends uh, happen to get married over the summertime. Uh, my brother even uh, had an informal sort of reception over the summer and I remember wearing this fragrance to a lot of those events. And every time I smell it, it really, it doesn't smell casual to me. 
right? This is a very sort of formal summertime sort of a fragrance. And I'll be honest with you, it's not that I won't be wearing this one in the fall. It's just that when you think of fall and you think of Roja Parfum, I can't help but think of creation -y. I can't help but think of Amber Oud. I can't help but think of Vetiver or some of the heavier fragrances from the brand. So Elysium is probably gonna take a back seat, but that doesn't change the fact that I absolutely love this fragrance. So the next fragrance on this list is one that I also enjoy wearing quite a bit, and I actually have two bottles of it. Truth be told, both of these bottles were provided to me by the brand, so I do wanna go ahead and disclose that. But when you take a look at the level of the liquid in this bottle, you will see that I have worn a tremendous amount of it because I absolutely love this fragrance. I've actually also done my top 10 summer fragrances list two years ago, and I featured this fragrance in the number one spot. This is how much I really love this fragrance. And I, I mentioned this before, I had the opportunity to meet up with the perfumer Olivier Cresp he told me about the fragrance and how it was made. He had me smell the individual raw materials and it just made me have this newfound appreciation for the fragrance and how it's put together. This one by Parfum de Marly. See, you can tell I wore a lot of this one. This one is called Sedley. And with Sedley, you do have this bright sort of minty quality in the opening. So good. You have that brightness of the mint. It's very full. It's inviting. It's uplifting. You have the citrus in here, but then you also have this really tasteful incense quality in the base, which I find to be amazing. And it's a really nice balance of the different ingredients. Of course, I think that, you know, now, especially with Greenlee and also with Galloway, Parfum de Marly does certainly have some lighter offerings on the market. But if you are a fan of mint based fragrances, but it, you don't want it to necessarily smell like a mint julep or a mojito or something like that, definitely check this out. In my opinion, it is very much so on the fresher side. So the next fragrance I actually, uh, you know, put in this list because it actually reminds me of a memory that I had when I traveled up to Canada. And it was quite a number of years ago. I even did a scent of the day video when I was, uh, at Niagara Falls. I'm gonna leave a link up here. I look so different in that video. Uh, but I actually wore this fragrance all throughout that trip. And it was me, my wife, and my father-in-law. And I remember just, you know, bathing in this fragrance and I've worn so much of it. My, my bottle is nearly empty and I've mentioned this a hundred times in the past. I need to get a new bottle and I still haven't gotten around to doing that. So it's nice that I have this video to serve as a gentle reminder and a push for me to go ahead and purchase. I'll probably end up buying a bottle after I'm done shooting this video. But this one by Hermes is Un Jardin sur le Nil. And the name translates to a garden on the Nile. And that's exactly what you get. This sort of tomato leaf mango vibe. It's fresh, it's earthy, it's vegetal, it's aromatic. You have that beautiful citrus, but it also has this aqueous transparent quality that Jean-Claude Elena, the perfumer for Hermes, uh, does so well in so many of his fragrances. And this is one that every time I wear it, it reminds me of Canada. It reminds me of that wonderful trip that I took with my wife and my father-in-law and it's just an incredible fragrance one of my favorites from the brand and there are so many fragrances by Hermes that I absolutely love I do also really like Voyage I like Terre de Hermes as well I like Un Jardin sur le Toit but this one is my absolute favorite so and then the last fragrance on this list is a metallic citrus kind of a fragrance. I haven't reviewed this one and I still plan on reviewing this one even though, you know, we're slowly approaching autumn. But this is a fantastic fragrance by the company BDK. And this one is called Citrus Riviera. So this was released as part of a duo of scents. It's Citrus Riviera and the other one is called Cell d'Argent. Cell d'Argent is this awesome, very organic smelling beachy, salty, uh, aquatic, marine type of a fragrance. Here with Citrus Riviera, you have this really awesome, bright, also organic smelling citrus fragrance, but there's this metallic undercurrent that I really, really like. It kind of puts me in the mindset of like a Mandarino di Amalfi by Tom Ford. It definitely comes across as like the type of private blend quality that you would expect from a brand like BDK. And I love so many of their offerings, not just this fragrance, but I also really love Wood Jasmine, uh, Rouge Smoking. There are so many favorites that I have. Uh, Bouquet de Hongrie is one that my wife loves wearing as well, but 
Citrus Riviera is without a doubt one of the fragrances from the brand that will remind me, and all fragrances in general, that will remind me of the summertime. And again, the reason why I put it on this list is because I went uh, May, June, and July really dying to get my hands on this fragrance. I actually also spoke about it in a previous video where I was discussing five fragrances that I really wanted to get my nose on and this actually made that list because I remember seeing the color of the bottle, knowing the quality that the brand is synonymous with and I said, you know what, I'm pretty confident that when this fragrance comes out, if I get my hands on a bottle, I'm gonna end up loving it and sure enough, I really do love this fragrance and I can't wear it, wait to wear it more often. My wife loves it and that's a plus as well. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. These have been five summer fragrances that I'm so excited to wear in the fall. Of course, if you own or have tried any of these fragrances, please let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. And of course, as always, I would love to hear from you guys. What is a summer fragrance that you're looking forward to wearing this autumn? I always love the interaction. So please remember to leave your comments down below. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. We'll see you next time. Bye.